Hey YouTube, today we're going to talk about old school frequency meters like the ones that you see sitting on the workbench here. You can have those for about 20 bucks on eBay and uh, they measure really high frequencies in the gigahertz range or rather they're capable of measuring high frequencies in the gigahertz range. There are versions that go as low as 2 gigahertz roundabout and they have coaxial connectors. As you can see the ones that I have here have um, waveguide connectors which usually indicates that they are destined for a very high frequency. Uh, this one right here, as you can see on the scale, goes up to 26 and a half gigahertz all the way on top there. I hope it focuses well on that and uh, has waveguide on the side for that particular frequency range. The most common types were most definitely these HP style uh, frequency meters and uh, they would either be called frequency meters or wave meter. Those are two very common terms and uh, some microwave uh, enthusiasts would call those things gumball machines for uh, well quite obviously their looks. There are some uh, slightly different versions. They look something like this. They have the scale up here and on the side they have a little table uh, that you use to translate between this reading and uh, the frequency and here's a little tiny one from a different manufacturer uh, for the 40 gigahertz range. So as you can tell you can get pretty high. So how do these frequency meters work? Well the principle is actually quite simple. They are basically tuned cavities and as you change this knob up here you're changing the resonance frequency of the cavity inside and you're also spinning around the scale on which you will be able to read that resonance frequency. So if you input an unknown signal here or here, it really doesn't matter what way, and uh, put a power detector on the other side, you will be able to see a distinct drop in output power at the resonance frequency of the cavity. So you put putting an unknown signal in, put your power detector here, and you just simply tune around until you see a drop in the output power. It's really that simple. And if you look at the scale, you may be surprised what a fine reading this kind of method allows you. Right now the cavity is at 21.1 gigahertz and over here is 21.2 gigahertz. That means you can read something like 21.15 gigahertz. No problems. You get two digits behind the comma and uh, if you're a little bit, uh, if you've got a good eye uh, you can get a little bit more accurate. However those cavities are temperature sensitive and they age so for really being able to read that precise, you need some sort of reference. So if you have a known source and you can compare it to, uh, and you know what your offset of this entire thing is, then you can probably read two, three digits behind the comma, but I wouldn't rely on it. You can get these frequency meters for about 20 bucks, maybe 30 bucks on eBay, so fairly cheap. At the time when they were released by HP, they were in the price range of about $500 a piece. So compared to a microwave frequency counters, they were and still are peanuts. They're a little bit old school, but they work. Okay, let's move over to the other end of the bench and I will show you exactly how to use these. This is a simple test setup just to show you how you can use a simple wave meter like the one shown. Here's our unknown frequency source. It's a 10 gigahertz uh, gun plexer. I know it should be somewhere between 10.3 and 10.5 gigahertz. Uh, right here I got two waveguide transitions and an SMA jumper. I know I could have just mounted the gun plexer onto the uh, wave meter. However, I had waveguide transitions on both of these parts, so uh, I didn't want to change that up and I just put a SMA jumper on it. Here's an HP wave meter for uh, the frequency range given. I think it goes up to 12.4 gigahertz and it starts out somewhere around uh, 8 something gigahertz. Right over here is another waveguide transition, a simple diode power detector, very cheap to get on eBay also, BNC connector into the multimeter, and we can see the multimeter reads 62, well 63 millivolts right now. Um, the wave meter is currently set at 10.35 gigahertz, and let's see what happens if I tune up. Alright, we see the voltage drops drops quite a bit and it comes back up. Okay, so we obviously overshot the uh, resonance point. Let's see, we're going up again. So let's go forward again. 
and that's a pretty good low right there and one thing you can already see is that this thing is really really sensitive and this can be really annoying if you know what frequency range to expect you can handle it but if you really have to tune through a large range you're really gonna spend a lot of time if you just tune through it uh, at a moderate speed you're gonna miss your resonance point okay but anyhow what's the frequency let's have a look at the scale and uh, what's relevant is what's in between those two red bars right here where this little filament is and you can read it's almost spot on at 10.4 gigahertz a little bit above but uh, we're gonna call that 10.4 gigahertz for now so our frequency is 10.4 gigahertz it's that easy that's the unknown frequency uh, this gun plexa is currently tuned to yes it's really that simple now I know what you're saying uh, you want me to prove this here you go the EIP 548a microwave counter is showing just slightly above 10.4 gigahertz exactly what we measured now of course let me prove that we're really hooked into the gun plexer here there you go so we can see that our uh, simple wave meter over here is fairly accurate if you look at the scale again this is what it's showing us just slightly over 10.4 gigahertz and that's exactly what we're measuring with the EIP also so there you go this is how easy it is to measure frequencies in the double gigahertz range and it really doesn't cost a whole lot of money like I said the little wave meter here you can get for about 20 bucks on eBay and don't really look for cosmetics it doesn't have to look pretty it just has to work um, these kind of detectors here you can have for 10 20 bucks and there are some waveguide detectors that attach directly to the waveguide so you don't need to worry about a transition but you can buy these transitions very cheap also and you can get all this stuff on ebay on the surplus market they are really really old school um, no, but I don't want to say nobody uses those anymore professionally, but I showed you they are very accurate.